everyone welcome to this black gothic writers panel um, i'm joined by seven other amazing black authors who write wonderfully dark novels and we're going to be discussing our books as well as how we re redefine uh, gothic literature so um, i'm going to let you all like introduce yourselves but first i want you to tell me a few things uh, who have you come as to this panel um, tell us about your book as well, and tell us about your favorite gothic novel. Okay. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Lizelle Sambri. I'm a young adult author. My debut, Blood Like Magic, comes out next year on June 15th. It's about a family of black witches living in a near future Toronto and the young black witch who is forced to choose between murdering her first love or losing her family's magic forever. And I've come as a star. <laughs> That's why I have this starry makeup. I tried to do some stars on the side. It's a little bit wonky. I'm not the best at makeup. Um, and favorite, I'm bad with favorites and I'm sort of cheaty. So I'm gonna talk about two, but um, I really loved uh, Mexican Gothic um, by um, Silvia Marino Garcia. Um, I thought it did the haunted house thing in such a cool way. And also, and now I'm showing my fangirl self, I loved The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I thought it was amazing and so dark and atmospheric. And yeah, that's me. And since I've already mentioned her, I'm gonna throw it over to Alexis. There we go. Okay, everyone, I'm Alexis, um, and I wrote The Year of the Witching, which is like a, a dark fantasy slash horror novel um, about a young girl who grew up in this like cult commune. Um, and she's sort of lured into the forest, the forbidden forest that surrounds her home. And there she encounters the spirits of four dead witches that reveal dark secrets about her past and the church. Um, yeah, I came as like vaguely witchy, <laughs> like, like maybe like American Horror Story coven witchy. Um, oh, and my favorite gothic reads, um, Mexican gothic, and then I, this is almost like a borderline basic answer at this point, but um, The Haunting of Hill House, because I just think it's terrifying. Um, and I like a little psychological horror. Oh, um, Kaylin can go next. Um, hey, I'm Kaylin Bayron. I am the author of uh, Cinderella is Dead. Um, came out this past summer. Um, Cinderella is Dead is the story of 16-year-old Sophia Grimmins. She's a young woman living in the former kingdom of Cinderella, um, and it's the place where Cinderella lived and died 200 years before. Um, she is preparing to attend her very first annual ball, which is now a mandatory event, and um, she's having none of it because she is in love with her best friend. Um, she goes up to the castle, and um, that kind of sets her on a collision course with Mersai's ruler and uh, leads her to uncovering some, some pretty devastating secrets about um, the kingdom that she lives in and Prince Charming and Cinderella and the fairy godmother and everybody else. Um, I'm just a witch. I'm just like a basic witch. Um, so I stole this from one of my kids. Um, and my favorite gothic novel, I have many, um, but I think probably Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, I, I even have it here. It's just one of my favorites. Um, Mexican Gothic is also amazing. Um, and I also, even though it doesn't really come up a lot, um, I think that Toni Morrison's Beloved falls into that category pretty squarely um, in a lot of ways, but it's, um, but it's us. So sometimes it gets left out, um, but those are my favorites. Um, Namina, I'll toss it to you. Hi, hi, my name is Namina Forna. Um, I am the author 
uh, of the novel The Gilded Ones, which comes out February 9th next year. Um, the Gilded Ones um, is set in a world um, where um, people, girls can be either pure or impure. And pure is red blood, impure is gold blood. Um, when my main character, Deka, that's her, discovers that um, she has, um, she's impure, she has golden blood, um, she is sentenced um, to be executed, but gets a reprieve in the form of a messenger telling her that if she fights um, on behalf of the emperor against these monsters that are invading her world, she will get a chance at purity. And so it's about what happens when she goes on this epic journey to become a warrior. And today I am a gothic narwhal. <laughs> so I got the horn. <laughs> um, and my favorite um, gothic books, first I wanna say The Year of the Witching. This is the season of The Year of the Witching. So that book all day, every day. Um, and then I'm a very big middle grade person. So I really love Neil Gaiman and two books that I really love are Coraline and The Graveyard Book. I think those are very warm and fuzzy um creepy gothic novels oh and who shall i pick on i'm gonna go with shannon thank you um i can't believe you said Coraline is warm and fuzzy i watched the movie and i was freaked out <laughs> um, anyway i am shannon smart and i'm the author of witches steeped in gold it follows two witches from rival orders who are forced to unite in order to take down a mutual enemy the mother of one of them who is also the witch who killed the other's family um i loved writing this book i loved making it really creepy and eldritch one of it was a sort of a challenge for me because it's set in a really tropical climate and i wanted to make sure that it embodied all those creepy witchy tropes that i love so much um and speaking about witchy books, one of my favourite reads this year has definitely been The Year of the Witching. Um, I'm down for all things witchy. Um, I loved the creepy wood setting and Alexis's writing is so atmospheric and beautiful for such a creepy subject. Um, and uh, another book is my very battered copy of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I studied this in school and I have loved it ever since. I watched the Netflix adaptation recently. Um, I do not recommend it. I think the older versions are, they're classics really. So uh, I prefer those, um, but I did enjoy Arnie Hammer's face. Thank you. And I'm going to pick JL. Thanks, Shannon. So I'm JL. I'm the author of Wings of Ebony, which comes out um, February 23rd, 2021. It is a YA fantasy about a Black girl from an inner city neighborhood who must lean into her ancestors' power to save her, her community from drug violence and crime. Um, I came as a cat. That's kind of my go-to because it's easy. And I wasn't going to do like any of this. And my friend was like watching me get ready via social distancing via FaceTime. And she's like, you have to at least do a note. So I really tried. I'm really bad at this. But anyway, so cat ears. And I want to do black lipstick, but I don't have enough left. So we did red. Um, and favorite gothic reads. Um, I struggle with favorites. Um, I would say two, two that I've read recently-ish that I really enjoyed um, was House of Salt and Sorrows, which I thought was very creepy. And atmospheric and then in the middle grade space uh, when I was doing some research for a project I was working on I read uh, Serafina and the Black Cloak which I thought was also um, very dark and mysterious and I will toss it to Jennifer. Hi everyone I'm Jennifer I'm the author of the of the Unfortunates, which is forthcoming for April 2022. It's a literary fiction uh, book that chronicles Sahara as she's going through her second year of college, and it's really focused on her struggle with depression as she uncovers a zine of her mother. I mean, sorry, of her aunt uh, that uh, her mom's sister uh, who was dying of AIDS in '94. And so the book is a very like she's haunted by like her family, and it really I'm trying to think like 
it's just very dark, but in a very darkly comical way. And it really is for me, Gothic literature isn't afraid to like go to places of like, what are you haunted by? Where it's like the darkness in you residing and kind of really being open to showcase that for people. My favorite uh, Gothic novel has to be The Picture of Dorian Gray. I love it so much. I've read the censored version and the uncensored version. And what I can recommend would be Crimson Peak, the film, because it's like one of my favorite films ever because the outfits are amazing. And today I just like went in my closet and like found <laughs> like what I had is because I'm like an extra Libra. I have so many like different, like just like tool robes. I put this one on today. And Farida? Yeah, I'm Farida Abikeinide and my book is Ace of Spades, which is out next year, June. And it's basically Get Out meets Gossip Girl, and it's a thriller set in a high school, and it's about um, me trying to reclaim the space for like black people to be able to thrive in thriller and like horrorish stuff. So yeah, that's what my book's about. And um, I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, oh, wait, I, I didn't say what I wouldn't as. Um, I am currently meant to be kind of like a Grim Reaper. I don't know if you can see my hat. But um, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the next question is, what are your favorite dark themes that you explore in your own stories and why? And I think I'm going to just go in the kind of the same order. Um, so if you can remember who went after you, just kind of speak. So uh, Lizelle, um, you go next. Um, so themes that I really like exploring, like dark themes, is really the sort of gray morality of people. I like it when I create a character that's like kind of terrible, but also very likable. I think it really calls people to struggle with like, can that person be your favorite, even though they're also doing these terrible things, um, especially for my main character in Blood Like Magic, because these people are also her family. And so they're doing terrible things, but they're also like people she knows and loves and cares about deeply. And it's kind of that struggle of divides in the community based on like trying to do black and white good or bad but that never really works and if i can get someone to like a character that's like actually terrible that makes me really happy um mine, mine sort of falls along the same wavelength wavelength i really like um i like it when there's a character that's sort of like flirting with like sinful dark like the evil things the supposedly evil things in the world um so that's sort of like seduction and temptation um, it's like huge for me. I love it. In my book, it kind of um, is represented by my main character's flirtation um, with the witches. It's almost romantic the way that she interacts with the witches and the woods and witchcraft. But I love that sense of like yearning for things that you know are wrong. And then you question like, well, why are they wrong? And that whole like rabbit trail is one of my favorite things about Gothic literature. Um, I, I really love exploring um, like family lineages um, and kind of, you know, what's what's underneath the surface because we all have, you know, secrets and, and things like that. So I really, I really like uh, exploring that. Also, just, you know, family dynamics within the context of of fiction, especially horror, um, gothic horror is, is really fun for me. Um, also, I really like I really like playing with concepts of romance against a backdrop of like all of these kind of supernatural, terrifying events. Um, I love it when characters are kind of like falling for each other and then like <clears throat> the ghost of an angry white man, you know, comes through and just messes everything up. And it's just kind of like, a, you know, it just that set up to me when there's always something kind of lurking in the background, but you still have these characters who are feeling what they feel um, is, is always fun to kind of play around with. Is it my turn? Oh, um, so themes that I really enjoy. Um, first, um, I love the horror of systems, right? Because I like um, that characters like go along with something, not realizing that they're caught in this system. Um, and they're not just fighting against, it's one-on-one, -on -one. it is against 
a construct that has been made for hundreds of thousands or however years. Um, I find that truly horrifying, this thought that you are like this small thing in this massive wheel and how do you break the wheel? The other thing I really enjoy is body horror. Um, one thing, one way people have described my book is that it's grim dark because there is a lot of dying and resurrecting and all of these things. Um, so, I mean, I just, I like just, you know, sort of the ripping of flesh and all of that sort of thing, um, which, you know, it's why, <laughs> so I guess I have to pull back, but yeah, I love that. I love setting as character. So I spoke a little bit earlier about how um, witches is in a tropical climate, um, but Jamaica has a really rich history of quite sinister things. So there's the legend of Obia, which forms the foundation for my magic system, this um, very taboo um, relationship with dark magic, to put it in like Western terms. So there's lots of um, ideas of associating with the devil and um, inviting evil into your house. So it's still quite taboo now. My aunts went a little bit mental when I was um, getting my mum to call them in Jamaica and to sort of feed me information so I could make the world as authentic as possible. And they were like, don't read any books about it because there is still this... Um, stigma associated with it um, and also to tie in with setting as character um, I went to Jamaica as a kid and we were told about the rolling calf this monster that would meet you at the crossroads and uh, drag you to hell and other creatures sort of like vampiric beasts who would suck your blood and then you would die um, so I love all of those sinister creepy monsters legends that are associated with a setting and exploring them in my own writing. I think I'm next. I'm right next. Um, I was thinking, so all of these things, I was thinking similar to Shannon, I really love um, Atmosphere's character. And I think in my debut novel, um, it was an interesting juxtaposition because there are two very distinctly different settings. And I use those very intentionally to say things about the world and say things about the character. Um, and the project I'm currently working on, it's, um, I would say it's actually more, much more squarely gothic than Wings of Ebony. But similarly, the atmosphere plays, um, plays a role. I love to explore the raw reality, similar to, similar to Namina about oppress oppressive systems. And I like to really show the gritty, raw truth of those systems. I think sometimes in books, um, we can pull back, and I really love books that show the reality of the situation and really allow readers to, to really look that fully in the face. I'm um, gonna allow, like, through characters, um, because I think that there's there's a part of that that I think it can be cathartic to, to see a character really grapple with things that you actually had to grapple with and deal with every day. So I've heard my books described as very raw and very gritty, um, and I like to explore I like to explore the, 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 the gray place where tough decisions are made. And um, in the, the project I'm currently working on, I'm specifically exploring this theme of, um, you know, how, how bad do you go if your purposes are good? Um, and so I love to just kind of play with that morally gray space. And then I like to dot in romance because, you know, I just think the juxtaposition is really nice. So. Love that. Um, for me, I like love investigating in my writing uh, forms of like death and dying, like visible versus on um, versus like invisible death. And especially like with my characters, like forms of social death, where like you have yourself like a part of this institution and by being part of it, you're witnessing like forms of yourself like dying. And like, how do you kind of like deal with that? And then how do you like still honor those parts of you that you lost? Um, without feeling completely lost yourself. So I feel like that's like super um, in my first project, Being Fortunate, and also like my next project that I'm working on right now as well. It's like obsessed with um, kind of systems and like how systems can be very monstrous and um, uh, very harmful to like the most marginalized. And I think that like, um, the scariest part of certain movies by um, like like certain directors, like for example, Jordan Peele's Us, 
was um, kind of white people. <laughs> um, I think that like when he like explores the systems, that was really scary to to me and just like showing um, it plainly what they're trying to do. Um, but like using horror to kind of twist it. I think that that's like what I love the most about like um, kind of, you know, the themes that I like to play with um, in my stories. And yeah, so the next question I have is, what is Gothic fiction to you? Um, so just like tell us kind of like how you define it. So this is interesting because for a long time, I think I had a very narrow thought about what Gothic fiction was. It was like very um, shaped by, you know, the idea of like a certain haunted house or people of like a certain class in like Britain, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and now I, after looking into it more, I definitely have a much broader definition of the sort of darkness that you can find in different spaces, which I really like because it's also more inclusive. Um, I watched this documentary on Shudder. Uh, it's called Horror Noir, and it's all about like the history of Black cinema. Um, and there's a quote they say, and there's, they talk about, you know, um, Black history is Black horror. And that just stuck with me so hard. And when I think of that, like I really can see more of like those gothic elements in my own work um, when I really talk about the history of ancestors in my story and like ancestors that have had not great pasts and kind of how they're trying to pass that knowledge forward to future generations. And so I think my feeling of gothic has definitely expanded more to sort of the general dark themes and like a lot of an atmosphere and feel. I feel like I could hear about a book and like read it and just kind of feel yeah that's the right tone that's kind of what gothic is to me yeah uh, to me i think that gothic fiction tends to like explore um darker themes or, or things that are like unpleasant um and difficult and that get under our skin and um i think that uh, like most gothic fiction that i read or that like immediately sort of kicks off this is my gothic fiction like alarm bells is that when there's like this presence of dread at some point in the story but normally it kind of like continues to the, throughout the entire narrative but when i'm i'm feeling like i'm watching a, a train wreck in slow motion and i know there's like no way um that the characters can escape something terrible happening to them and i can feel it coming um to me that kind of is like kind of what gothic fiction feels like it just like gets under my skin um and stays with me and um yeah i think i'm like i just i i think it's fascinating to watch the way that those characters sort of grapple with the the darkness of their own world and try to come to terms with it even if that means sort of embracing some of that darkness themselves um and accepting um the realities of the world that they're in um and perhaps questioning like why those things that they were told are evil or dark um are, like why they're told to believe that. Um, so I think those are the sorts of things that I, I attribute to Gothic fiction. Um, yeah, I have a really similar um, feeling about it. For me, it's, it's really about um, the feeling of the work, um, especially in Gothic horror. It's, it's really about that that kind of creeping sense of dread, um, that, you know, the sense that something is not quite right, and you, but you just cannot quite put your finger on it. Um, <clears throat> and then I think it's also about, <clears throat> excuse me, the kind of terror that, um, <clears throat> that drives you to kind of delve deeper, um, even though you know you shouldn't. Um, and, sorry, something popped up on my screen. Um, and then I think it's, it, you know, at some point you kind of realize that what you're going to find out is going to be terrifying and unbelievable, but you can't, it's too late. Um, and so that, that kind of feeling is what defines um, Gothic fiction for me. Um, and I think that within all of those stories, there's also the family dynamic, you know, it's about relationships. It's about relationships with family and friends and um, community um, and all of those themes, you know, um, we get to explore uh, within this space. So um, I think it's a combination of all of those things, but at its heart, it's just that, that unrelenting dread. I think for me that Gothic horror is about two things. Um, it's about atmosphere and it's about interiority. Um, because 
a lot and when, what I mean by interiority is a lot of times the horror um, is on the outside, but also there's a dread um, and there's a decay that is happening within. And I think for me, that's what really distinguishes like truly excellent Gothic horror. It's not just what's rotting out there, but in here. Um, and when I talk about atmosphere, I think so often we're used to like the decaying house on the hill and, you know, in Europe or whatever. But I really think that like anywhere can be Gothic. For instance, I grew up between um, Sierra Leone, West Africa and, Adla um, and just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And both are extremely Gothic places. Like for me growing up in Georgia, in the suburbs of Georgia, there was like a Gothicness to like sort of the uniformity of like how all the houses were, especially you know, in the autumn, like it was, there was always this sense of dread for me and I thought it was very delicious. Or in Sierra Leone during rainy season, you have all these houses that are sort of mildewing and it's like amazing and there's the mist and it's like, oh yeah, truly, truly gothic. So yeah, atmosphere and interiority. Um, so Kaylin mentioned Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and one of the biggest themes in that book is, well, for me anyway, is the fear of breaking away from the institution. So um, Hyde's character it encapsulates everything that is different uh, in society and everything society hates. He goes against the grain. And that is what Gothic is for me, something that is when you sort of stand alone and you move away from the institution and you, you then are kind of the enemy of the state and everyone's turning against you. To be different um, is dangerous. And I really enjoyed exploring that in, in, in my book, In Witches Steeped in Gold, this idea that um, you cannot break away from what is the norm. You have to fit in. And if you do attempt to break away, then, like what Namina was saying, there's not just the decay of the world around you, but there's also this decay of self and the building dread, where is this character going to go? How is this story going to be resolved? So on and so forth. Um, I really enjoy um, reading and writing with that theme in mind. Yeah, so for me, I think very similar to what a lot of people have said, I do, I do think I've had a very narrow view of what gothic literature could be um but it, it is very much like a vibe or a tone that i get when i'm reading and it's been fun and, and i think i guess i think of it as like creepy dark strong sense of place like very atmospheric um i think i think typically like you know sure like a you know creepy mansion on a hill but then i think like um Namita was saying too even broader than that. Um, thinking of like specific, for example, I read a book, a manuscript recently where there was an island involved and it was very, very creepy and dark. Um, but yeah, so I think that's what I, it's, it's a vibe, it's a tone. It's like a seductive, uh, like it's uncomfortable, but it's like seductive in it. So you like, it's uncomfortable, kind of like Kaylin was saying, but you, you want to go deeper and you want to read more. And I think that that, is a mark of its genius because it, I think it really um, kindles a curiosity in us and, and even like a seenness, if I can make up a word. Um, and I think it connects with a part of us that allows us to explore, um, you know, this 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 interior piece, like some other people have said. Um, and I think it's been fun specifically to sort of challenge my you know, what what I think has been traditionally understood as gothic in um in my book and in my specifically my current project which is which is a lot more gothic um and just really push those boundaries and like redefine it in a way that i feel like fits me and my experience and and so that's been fun i think like i agree with so much that has already been said and for me gothic literature is that feeling as if someone's just like running their fingers against your spine like very slowly and they're just and like well all the while hovering over you and then also there's a feeling of disguise too where you know something's there and you just can't see it yet and I think
for me, a lot of times, like, I feel like the disguise, especially, and I feel like in Gothic literature, has to do with, like, the costumes and, like, the wardrobe and how, like, something can be, like, painted, like, so beautiful, but then, like, once you start, like, peeling away the paint, you kind of see the true nature of it. And so I always, like, try to include that, like, either, like, the fashion um, into, like, creating, like, the atmosphere and the setting for, like, my Gothic characters and, like, my Gothic literature. Um, I feel like uh, gothic literature is so like I think often like portrayed as narrow and very much a thing that only white men can do um, but I think that black people have been writing and even telling um, gothic stories from the beginning of time like I think about all the stories I grew up with I'm Nigerian and um, most of the folklore is very very gothic and um, like similarly to Jamaica like with what Shannon was saying um, everything's kind of forbidden and like hush hush because there's a stigma t um, tied to it because obviously colonialism brought different ideas of what is good and what is bad um, and so I think gothic literature is about like you know like that, that creepiness and that vibe of like being unsettled in some way um, or it's about systems that can be very monstrous or it's just about like um, you know grief or death and um, I feel like I forgot to mention my favorite book earlier that's gothic and it's um, Amongst the Calls by Patrick Ness and it's a children's book that deals with grief and while there's a monster in it I think the big gothic element is kind of um, dealing with yourself and kind of a part of you dying and I think the part of him dying was his childhood because his mum is going to die and he's dealing with that throughout the book um, and I just think that like expanding what we believe to be gothic is just so important for just keeping it alive and interesting, but also understanding what it fundamentally is and always has been. Um, and I'm gonna end this amazing panel on one last question, which is, uh, can you recommend a Gothic show or movie? Um, I always super recommend uh, The Haunting of Hill House, which I love very, very deeply. Uh, not so much The Haunting of Bly Manor dislike, but The Haunting of Hill House for sure, really love. Um, and also, which I'm not caught up yet, but it is very good, uh, love, Lovecraft Country. I adore, I think it's so good. And those are my show recommendations. <laughs> Um, unsurprisingly, probably, I, I recommend The Witch. I just think it's the perfect movie. It's so scary and it's just beautiful to watch. I think it's perfect for like the Halloween season, so. Um, I have many, but I think probably my favorite show is um, Penny Dreadful. Um, it's over now, but it was, but I, I love that, all the seasons of that. I think there's three seasons. Um, the Haunting of Hill House, um, and for movies, I mean, probably, probably Dracula with Gary Oldman, um, is one of my favorites, but Crimson Peak, like, please don't judge me, but I love, uh, <laughs> Crimson Peak. So, yeah. All right. So I have a couple. First, I want to say Eve's Bayou, which is criminally underseen. Like, I mean, it's witches in like the south there's mist there's like moss hanging off trees it's a beautiful story everybody needs to watch that of course um for gothic american horror story um two seasons the murder house and the one and coven are especially especially gothic um and I, there was one more that i was thinking of um i would also say um pushing daisies that one is gothic but like delightful so if like you're too scared i think the two things you can watch are eve's bayou and pushing daisies um eve's bayou has the atmosphere but pushing daisies is just delightful while also being gothic so watch it yeah um i'm going to recommend rosemary's baby i watched that years and years and years ago um against my parents recommendation and um deliciously creepy pregnant woman she's incredibly vulnerable her neighbors are weird um there's monsters my favorite thing ever um and also the haunting of hill house definitely pick that over bly manor i'm sitting here like taking notes of recommendations <laughs> i forgot it was my turn 
Oh, I was actually going to say Eve's value too. Um, I am embarrassingly behind on television, so I'm not very far into Lovecraft, but I would also advocate for that one. Um, but Eve's value being from um, Louisiana and from the South, um, it was just one of the first movies of its kind that made me feel seen um, in that way. So um, I thought it was really good. And then I, does The Witcher classify as, as gothic? I think it sort of is, but I really enjoyed The Witcher as well. Oops. Um, so I think my recommendations I already said I Crimson Peak, which I like I just love the as as I said before, I love the costumes. Um, and then uh what we do in the shadows, it's like a comedy and it's just so funny to me and it's just like my favorite like pick me up ever and it has vampires, which I like I'm obsessed with. Um, and then like the first couple episodes of the TV show Hellstrom on like Hulu, it's uh it's like a Marvel spinoff that's like also like really good. And then the Netflix show Castlevania, which I'm just like obsessed with, and I've been rewatching season two, and I'm like, oh my god, this show is just so ingenious. And then they set up everything that's gonna happen in season three and season two. So I'm just such a big fan of it. It's huge. season of um what's it called again american horror story i think that was just so cool and i saw like black kind of witches for the first time on tv i think i watched it when i was like 13. um and then orphan black which is like about like wacky science and um clones and it's just really dark and also house of anubis which i grew up with and i just thought it was so cool there was like a secret society and like mythology and yeah, like I think it really influenced um, how I see Gothic now and like what books I like and everything. Um, so yeah, those are amazing. I'm gonna take those down. I'm very, very uncultured. So I'm gonna make sure to catch up on that. Um, but thank you for everyone for like joining us today. Um, this was so much fun and I've learned so much about like different perspectives of Gothic. And um, thank you guys for all like agreeing to be on this panel and coming dressed amazingly. You look great. Um, and thank you for everyone watching um, for expanding your ideas of Gothic. And I'm going to put all of the um, information to our books below. Um, and yeah, happy Halloween. Bye. <laughs>